God. Your daughters of God. And it's not because of, not because I said, the Bible says to the, as many as believe, to them gave He power to become sons of God. He gave you the Holy Ghost to let you grow up and become everything that Jesus died for. Everything He wants to impart in you, the Holy Ghost can help us get that. How I'm telling you something, God, when He sends the Holy Ghost, He sends the very one that was needed to do what needs to be done on this planet. See, Jesus sat down. And when He sat down, He said, I'm going to send back my Spirit to come back down here. And He dwells in us. And He nurtures us and He helps us. And I'm thankful this morning that... I'm thankful this morning that while he sits there, listen to me now, while he's sitting there, he's looking at the Father, beholding his face, saying, Father, help those people. He intercedes for us. He prays for us. He says, God, they need strength. They need help. And you know what? I love what he said about his disciples. He said, Father, he said, here they are. He said, every one of you gave me. He said, I kept them. He said, they're still with me. Only the one. That was appointed unto him that he would betray me and go the wrong way. But otherwise, they're all here. I believe this morning that God can keep us. Do you believe that? And I believe that Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father for one reason. That's just to intercede for us. Father, 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 Father. I mean, you trust his prayer. <laughs> I do. I do. And I'm going to tell you something. There's one thing I'm convinced of. Man, you've got to work hard to go to heaven. You do. You've got to really want to go if you want to go. Because Jesus paid the absolute ultimate price and you do not have to. And I'm going to tell you something right now. God doesn't send people to hell. If you choose it, you can go there. He will not get in your way. But He didn't send you there. You rejected Jesus. And that's all there is for. How hard is that, my friend? You know, it's amazing to me how the atheists and those that are out there in the world, they promote everything and they want to cut God out of everything. But Jesus, He says, if you'll just believe. You know why the, the, the people died in the wilderness by the thousands? Because they did not believe God. And God says, okay, because of your unbelief, all of you are going to die in the wilderness except two. Caleb and Joshua. You're going to go into the land. Even Moses didn't make it in, but it wasn't because he didn't believe. He just didn't do it God's way exactly. He hit the rock. He struck the rock twice instead of once. And Jesus didn't get struck twice. He got struck once on the cross. And it was a type. And he said, man, you messed up, Moses. He said, let me take you up on the mountain. And I'll show you. I'll show you the stuff that you can't go in. But Joshua and Caleb, you get to go in. And after everybody who did not believe dies off, he says, then we're going to take a whole new generation. And we're going to go into the land. And Joshua, we're going to be the main man. And I love, I love those two. But among the two, I love Caleb, man. He was an amazing guy. That guy was amazing. I love him. And But I'm trying to say something this morning. Because of unbelief, that's the problem. Because of unbelief. And it's not because of, you know, some people say, well, you're going to go to hell for this. You're going to go to hell for that. No, you're going to go to hell if you choose so. Because you did not believe Jesus was Lord. That's all. You say, well, what about this sin? What about that sin? Listen to me. All of those sins can be covered when you call on Jesus. The sin is not the problem. It's the unbelief that you do not believe Jesus is Lord. That's the whole problem. See, when you get Jesus as Lord in your life and He becomes your Savior, you have a repentant heart. It doesn't matter what the sins are out there because Jesus overcame and He took on the sin of the world and He became sin for you. For you. You understand what I'm saying? My goodness, the heat that the sun makes free is free indeed. Can you hear what I'm saying? There's no reason for anything less than freedom because Jesus paid for it. Even though we have... Places we're still in bondage doesn't mean that he's not big enough to help us. Amen. Jesus sat down. Let me read you one more scripture. Listen to this. It's in Hebrews again. It's in Hebrews 1, or Hebrews 8, chapter 1. Or Hebrews chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 says, Now the things which we have spoken, this is the Son. Boy, that's powerful. You need to read all of the book of Hebrews up until it. Chapter 8, he says, now this is what I'm going to sum it all up for you. He says, we have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in heaven, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched in the man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifice for him. Wherefore, it is, or, it is a necessity this man has somewhat to offer also. For if he were on earth, he should not be an, a priest, seeing that, he, that these are priests that offer gifts according to the law. I don't need to read any, any more there. I just want you to understand something. This, this great high priest, he is set on the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus sits there right now. He's planted there right now. He's sat there. And I want you to get a handle on something. What he did, he did thoroughly. 
Everybody say he did it thoroughly. He didn't leave anything undone. He took care of it absolutely. Okay? Now I want you to understand something else. I want you to, I want you to go back in your memory and say, hmm, what does Hebrews 13 8 say? I'm going to tell you. It says that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? How many of you believe the Bible? Now, you know, I, I, it's kind of it's kind of unnerving. Some people, some people uh, ignore the Bible, call themselves Christians and ignore the Bible. I'm going, what's your problem? If you call yourself a Christian, this is this is the very this is the very thing you, you build your life on. Everything, you know. Uh, uh, listen, I don't have an argument until I have the Bible. You know, have you ever tried to argue with folks who don't believe the Bible? It's quicksand. You can't go nowhere. There's no there's no foundation. You can't talk to it because they don't believe the Bible. But the Bible says that it's inspired, the Word of God. It's God-given. It's not something, yes, men wrote it. But they, they penned it. But God wrote it. Let me tell you something. There is no book on this planet that dovetails like this thing. And I'm going to tell you something. You pay attention. You pay attention. And you look around the world and tell me that the headlines that you're reading don't line up with this thing. It lines up exactly. And it's going to get more and more and more evident every day that God wrote this thing, not some man, even though some man penned it. I believe when Paul wrote the book, he wrote it by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. It wasn't just something he sucked out of his thumb. He wrote it on the basis of what God, by the Holy Ghost, inspired him by revelation to write. He said, my God, I'm so full of the mysteries of the revelation of God, I'm scared. We build our life on the Word. And Jesus, I'm going to get back to what I was saying, but Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Alright? Let me give you a couple more. The Bible says in James 1.17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no light. Variables, not the shadow of the truth. Aren't you, getting, aren't you glad God's not like that? You are or like I am. And we'd be in deep trouble. God's not moody. Did you know that? Thank God He's not moody. I love moody people, don't you? One minute they're happy, the next minute they eat you. He's, uh, he's forever the same. The Bible says, Thy word, O Lord, is forever established in the heavens. It cannot change. I'm amazed at people. They think that they're going to... I'm amazed at people that think they're going to beat God. Believe me, people believe that. They actually think that they're going to run Him off and they're going to win. What foolishness. If they could only... If I could only read to them the book and have them understand that, you know, one of these days He's going to bring it all back around and they're going to answer to him. And let me tell you something. I, 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 I'm, 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 uh, I'm impressed when Jesus showed up in the presence of humanity. John was a man who knew Jesus probably as good as anybody that ever walked this planet. I mean physically. He had contact. He lived with the Apostle John. But you know what? When he showed up with the revelation, he showed up with the revelation on the Isle of Patmos. John says, I fell at his feet as a dead man. He said, I didn't have no strength left in me. I believe Daniel was a righteous man, a holy man. But when Jesus showed up to that man, he collapsed in the heap and he said, man, there's no strength left in me. Help me! And you think, and you think that you're going to stand in God's presence and argue with Him? you got another thing. You're not even going to have, you can't even, you won't even be able to speak. And if it hadn't been for the blood of Jesus, you couldn't even stand I told, I wrote on Facebook the other day, I thank God that I've been washed in the blood. That I've been justified by the power of His blood. Not, it's, it, it, listen, Jesus did it for me. Every good gift, that's Jesus. Every perfect gift, that's Jesus, comes from her. The Father of lights. He sure did. With whom there is no variable, it's not a shadow of turning. There's nothing in God that's shadowed. There's nothing even that you just, you're not sure that you can trust. You know, all of us have areas where we're going, well, I need help here. God don't need help. 